Hello and welcome to this video lecture. We are going to introduce free conviction or natural conviction today. So those terms natural conviction and free conviction mean the same thing and they're used interchangeably both in the textbook and in my lectures. So I want to start out by providing you with some thought questions. So there's some explanation first. So in previous lectures when we've talked about internal and external conviction we have focused on what's called forced convection, where you have an active fluid flow that makes convection happen. So if you recall, we always have a fluid velocity as we're coming up with convection correlations. So imagine if you don't have that forced convection. So imagine a room where the surrounding air is maintained to be totally quiescent, which means just still. It's not moving or circulating. Imagine that there is a hot solid object in the room which has a temperature higher than the room air. So the questions I want to ask, and you can pause and think about these if you'd like. The first question is, is there going to be heat transfer? Again, keep in mind you have a hot solid object in a room where the air is colder than the object, so will there be heat transfer? Since the fluid is still, or it's Yes, and it's not circulating, it's not moving um, from a bulk fluid point of view. If there is heat transfer, will this heat transfer be purely by conduction? So remember, conduction can happen in a solid or in a stationary fluid. So think about this, is, that fl is there going to be convection happening? So let's answer this question. So here is, let's imagine we just have a hot pipe in a cold room. So if this hot pipe is at a surface temperature of Ts and the cold room is at a lower temperature T infinity, will there be heat transfer from the pipe to the cold room? The answer is yes. You probably got that already, especially when you introduce that second question. So the next question is, if this air is not circulating, um, will this heat transfer just be conduction or will it still be by convection? So the answer to that is it will be, well the first answer is yes there will be heat transfer and then the second answer is this flow, this heat transfer will be by convection. So even though the fluid in the room is not circulating and bear in mind that would actually be a pretty difficult condition to maintain to have a room with with no currents and here's one of the reasons as this fluid, so let's say we could suddenly heat this pipe up just instantaneously from T infinity up to Ts. So what would happen is initially you would get conductive heat transfer, almost purely conductive heat transfer as that Ts gradually conducts into a stationary fluid. However, what happens as that fluid gets heated is that it expands. When it expands, it has a lower density. So that lower density is going to create a current. So you'll start to have this current caused by the pipe surface or the object surface heating up the air immediately around it. So at first that'll be purely conduction. However, as that fluid around it gets heated, it will have what's called a buoyancy force. Or, and that buoyancy force, because this fluid will be less dense, will start to create this circulation. And that circulation will gradually go all around this pipe and then it'll carry that heat up and away. So you will, over time, get this natural circulation of air. So the, the, because the fluid immediately around the pipe will no longer be stationary or still. So while everywhere else around may still have a fluid velocity of zero, here close to the pipe you're still going to have a fluid velocity that is non-zero. And so you will end up getting convection. So there is a difference 
um, between natural or free convection and forced convection. And we're just going to go through some explanations here. So if you recall, convection is a combination of conduction and advection. So conduction, if you recall from the, our many video lectures on conduction, conduction is heat transfer within a solid or a stationary fluid, and it is driven by molecular motion on a microscopic scale. So as atoms and molecules get energized, as they heat up, they start to vibrate more, they start to rotate more, and even if they're still kind of held in place, those molecules would be um, bouncing off of and colliding with adjacent molecules, which would then get energized, and they would energize the molecules next to that. So that describes conduction. So even though we're talking about a fluid, that still certainly happens. However, because it's a fluid, and as it starts to flow, you get what's called advection, and that is where when the fluid moves from one place to another, it's carrying that energy with it. So just by fluid flowing through a pipe, it's carrying energy with it. So even in natural or free convection, you do get this advection happening where you some of that energy as this fluid is getting heated up some of that energy is literally being carried away as that fluid starts to flow so with natural or free convection fluid still fluid flow still creates enhanced heat transfer but the fluid flow is induced by heating or by cooling due to a solid surface at a different temperature than the surrounding quiescent fluid so i did want to point out we talked about a heating example before this could also happen when you're cooling, only the reverse would be true. So let's say that pipe were now colder than the surrounding air. Well now um, you're going to have heat that travels from the fluid into the pipe. So as that heat leaves the fluid, that fluid is now going to be colder. Typically it'll be more dense and you'll start to have fluid flowing the other way. So you'd have this colder fluid flowing downward, but the phenomenon is basically the same. So natural or free convection can happen whether you're, the surface is heating the fluid or whether the surface is cooling the fluid. So with forced convection, the fluid is forced past the surface. So there would be something that is induced, something besides um, these buoyancy forces that is inducing flow. So that could be wind, it could be a fan, a pump, a compressor, etc. A lot of different ways to have forced convection. So you can also have combinations of forced and free convection and that is called mixed convection and we'll talk about that in our next lecture. So let's talk a little bit more about these buoyancy forces. So you can have stable or unstable, what's called fluid stratification. So Fluid stratification basically means there is a temperature gradient that persists in your fluid. So let's say if you had fluid in a room and the fluid on the bottom were hotter than the fluid on the top, so this is going to create natural circulation as that hotter fluid will want to rise um, and the colder fluid will want to sink. So just by having this having uneven heating you will induce um, some fluid circulation and you will create advection which again is one of the critical components of convection so here in this particular case we have a uh, temperature um, plotted over the top of x so x would be the distance this way and temperature would be this way so here, when you have a higher temperature, that is an unstable condition, and the fluid is going to want to tend to circulate. Then that is because the density is lower when the temperature is higher. So on the right-hand side, we have a, a stable condition. So here we have the colder fluid on the bottom. So basically, it could stay like this for long periods of time. So when that colder fluid is on the bottom, it's going to want to tend to stay there because there is no buoyancy force. We have the more dense fluid at the bottom and the less dense fluid at the top. So this is called a, a stable thermal stratification of a fluid. So this concept, uh, as the fluid starts to flow, when it's induced by these buoyancy forces um, caused by 
uneven heating of the fluid around it, you st we're still going to get boundary layers. So here we have a hot wire. So that hot wire is certainly going to induce flow. Um, there are going to be viscous effects that create boundary layers. So here on the edge, if this is our um, velocity boundary layer, you can see that where that moving fluid encounters the stationary fluid, there may be something like a no-slip condition, meaning that at the edge of this plume, there is going to be a, um, a velocity of zero, basically. But here in the center of the plume, you're going to get your maximum velocity. And the same basic thing can happen even when you have initially horizontal flow, like uh, fluid coming out of a tailpipe or something. That hotter fluid is going to create this buoyant jet and that buoyant jet is going to have its own velocity profile like this. So we will talk a little bit about the formation of boundary layers as we discuss natural or free convection. This can happen when you have vertical plates. So here if we have a heated plate, um, we definitely get that no slip condition here because you have a fluid up against a a solid, so you get a no slip condition here, and then on the other side, so unlike in uh, forced convection where these guys would have kept um, growing out until you got out to some free stream velocity, in this case the f the fluid flow is bounded, the velocity is bounded on each side. Here it's bounded by this solid, and here it's bounded by being up against the quiescent fluid or the stationary fluid. So you still get the formation of boundary layers and that all plays into the theory of how uh, free convection happens. Same thing here with the thermal boundary layer. So just like in external convection, you have the velocity boundary layer with a thickness delta and the thermal boundary layer with a thickness delta sub t. And you would definitely still have this thermal boundary layer forming where if it's a heated pipe, it's going to, when you're at the, uh, sorry, if this is a heated plate, at the surface of the heated plate, you're going to have the highest fluid temperature, and then that's going to tail off exponentially until our fluid, as you get far enough away from the plate, is eventually going to be just at our ambient or our bulk fluid temperature of T infinity.